this man's work was so fatal that a whole lot of things could be used. But the thing is, Cameroonians are not even using it. They think that they can copy. Let me tell you, majority of what is coming out of Cameroon today is copied. It's not Cameroon based. It's not. Hey guys, um, how you guys doing, man? This your boy, Mr. J, aka Kwame Boy, a bong boy, a dekunle, a dekunwake, Krio Boy Bazinga. What's happening, you dick gang? What's happening, Marvel? I just want to say thank you for tuning in, man, and um, you're welcome back to the platform. Um, just off the bit, excuse me, off the bad, man. This is not, this is a non musical reaction, and we're going to talk about something real quick today. And uh, since as my Cameroonian brothers and my Cameroonian folks been coming at me with these funny, funny messages, these DMs, and these funny, funny arguments, insults, and everything about what I say, and I'm going to take everything with a grain of salt, but like I always do it, I try to educate you and school you in exactly what I mean. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, in the vlog that I said earlier, and I was like, there's nothing new in music. You know, music is just reinventing. You dig? Music is taking this from this side and bringing your own, your own flair, your own vibe to it. And you make something different. You know, in, in, in academics, we say thesis plus antithesis gives us a whole brand new thesis. I mean, those who understand, go understand what I mean. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want us to look at a Cameroonian artist. He's of late, I mean, and he goes by the name Manu Jibango. And I want us to look at his career. And I want to tell you something, though. Mr. Manu Jibango is one of the most sampled artists from Africa. This is the first African artist who was who went international in terms of his work you feel me yes i know a whole lot of people say oh, what about felakuti yes felakuti is dope and everything but when it comes to africa and music that i've been i'm talking about music sampled across the globe mr manu dibango is the first may he so rest in peace let's talk about mr manu dibango uh late Manu Dibango, like we say back at home. Uh, Mr. Manu Dibango was born in Cameroon in the 1930s. And he went to France. He moved to France at the age of 15. Now, while he was in France, he picked up a saxophone. He fell in love. And that's what made this man international. He has been associated with, 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 with groups like the African Congolese group called African Jazz. And they toured together. They heard what this man is doing. And then they toured Europe. This man became so good at what he does. So perfect at what he does. That today. Let me tell you ladies and gentlemen. Is, this man is. I'm talking about. He is, he is going everywhere through his work. You feel me? Now. After the, the war against segregation, two American DJs went to Europe. DJ Dave Man, Man, Mansoko, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, Mancoso went to Europe. They were looking for African music because that was when the Black Panther, the Black Panther in which Tupac's mother was part of it. She was jailed because of that. Yes, yeah, she was in that struggle. This DJ and Frankie Kruger went to France. And then when they went to France, they, they discovered Manu Dibango's work. Late Manu Dibango's work. May he so rest in peace. These two DJs from New York, David Man Man Mansoko and Frank Kroker. They took this work to America. They are the first DJs to introduce Manu Dibango to America. 
Guess what? Once he got to America, that shit just went haywire. How did it go? Now, if you guys remember, let me just pause a little bit. I keep telling the Cameroon artists, the Cameroon musicians that, hey, go back to the old folks who did music. I'm talking about the Makosa. And somebody came with a statement that I keep talking about people going back, but don't I think that all these people have, 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 have licensed? Of course they have licensed the product. And what, how are they going to eat? Now, when I say sample the music, I don't mean you should take verbatim, word for word. You should take the music and just remove the lyrics and put, nah, that is not what I mean. Sampling can be through instruments. Sampling can be through through lyrics, songs, words. You feel me? So we're going to talk about how DJ Frank Crooker and DJ David Mansoko helped Manu Dibango's work to be sampled around Jones in 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 America. Now I wrote a whole lot of it because it's a whole lot of them, so I'm going to be reading from time to time. If you see me looking down, because I wanted to get everything sipped to these people who came with some baseless and some really dumb dumb baseless arguments, and you know, until somewhere insulting me, but it's so good because I know that you are so dumb you don't understand nothing. Now immediately these two DJs from New York arrived in New York with uh, Manu Dibango's work because he was big back in Europe, France, Belgium, Germany. He was doing shows, you know what I mean? Immediately they got to America, it became an instant hit because the black communities in America, they married, they buried. I mean, they embraced that stuff because it was music from the motherland. Now we're going to talk about how the samples, I'm talking about Manu Dibango's work has been sampled. I'm talking about the drums, the horns, and even the, the words. I'm going to give you an outline of how some of these of his, of his work was sampled. The first one, we're going to talk about how Manu Dibango's drums have been sampled. I'm talking about across the globe, which is why he is a global musical icon. It's not just a Cameroonian thing. He's, he took Cameroon to the world. He did using his saxophone. You smell me? The first one was Cool and the Gang. They sampled this, this, Manu Dibango dropped this So Makosa. The sample So Makosa was dropped in 19, 1972. I wasn't even born then. But when I came in and I started liking music, I was listening to things like this. They, so Makosa was sampled by a whole, Cool, Cool and the Gang. That's a track that they did. Uh, 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 um, Hollywood Swinging, 1973. They sampled Manu Dibango's drums in there. Poor righteous teachers. Poor righteous teachers in nineteen in nineteen ninety. Butt naked booty blues. They sample Manu Dibango's drums. You dig Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch on the house tip. They sample Manu Dibango on it. You feel me? Public enemy can't trust it. Nineteen ninety one. Manu Dibango was sampled on it. His drums from his work. They just sampled just the drums. You feel me? Uh, Deborah Cox in 2002. Up and down she sampled uh, Manu Dibango's drums. You feel me? I'm talking about Bogweed Boys. Ice Cream and Cake. They sampled Manu Dibango's stuff on it. You feel me? So, we can go on and on for so Makosa. With the drums, but these are the few, the few stuff that were, that have been sampled from Manuti Bango. This great, this great phenomenon music or so, sampled and reinvented to give new stuff. Sampled and reinvented to give new stuff. That is, that's the game in music. That's the game in entertainment. Now, in 1974, Manuti Bango dropped the project Weya, Weya, Weya. He was sampled by Africa Ben Batter and the, 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 the Soul Sonic Force Man in 1983. Renegades of Funk. They sampled that thing. Bust Rhyme, Bust a Bust, you know, Bust Rhyme, the Bust Rhyme of today. He sampled Manu Dibango's Way Ya, you dig? In what we in a track called Keeping It Tight. That shit was in 1998. He sampled that stuff. You dig? 
So, when I keep telling you guys that our Cameroon artists, they don't even know how to go back to old stuff from Cameroon and sample. If you listen to Nigerian Afrobeat, look at Burner Boy. If you listen to Burner Boy, Kinley, you're going to see that there's a whole lot from Fela, which he took and he brought his own flair and he gave something, gave life to something different and unique, which resulted into his Grammy. He has been doing this. But see, my Cameroon artists and my Cameroon folks keep thinking that I'm just hating on Cameroon music. Now, let's talk about Manu Dibango's horns. This man's work was so fertile that a whole lot of things could be used. But the thing is, Cameroonians are not even using it. They think that they can copy. Let me tell you, majority of what is coming out of Cameroon today is copied. It's not Cameroon-based. It's not authentic. I just dropped something of Magasco and immediately you can see that it's, it's, Af it's copied from Nigeria. You guys going to argue, you guys going to hear, but it's all right. We going to keep talking about it. Remember, I told you guys, I give you re the real facts and give you candidly. If you want to think that I'm hating, it's all up to you. you do, but until we get it straight, I'm going to keep giving you all the gospel truth. Now, I mean, go get schooled and then you come back, you talk to Mr. J. You feel me? Now, Manu Dibango's horns were sampled from his projects. I'm talking about the first sampling was by Brenton Wood, man. Reggae Makosa. Have you guys ever heard of something like that? Reggae Makosa. See, Cameroonians don't even do Reggae Makosa. You take Reggae and you blend it with Makosa. Yes, Brenton Wood did that in 1973. Some of these artists of today were not born. I'm talking about all those artists you guys think that are the best, the top. Bro, let me tell you guys something. Or else somebody tells these, these kids the truth, they're going to keep moving around like headless chickens. And they're not going to get, you guys will never get no respect across music in motherland. Because it's clear to see. It is clear to see who got it and who's offending and who's not. You smell me? Beyonce sampled this man's horns in Deja Vu, in Homecoming. I I watched that. I remember that. And I was like, ooh, she gonna pay. You did, but, you know, that was different. You know, he sampled that in, that was 20, 2019. It's not long ago. In the home, go watch it, Homecoming. Jennifer Lopez, Big Pun, Fat Joe, in 2000s, I remember this song like it was yesterday. Feeling so good. Sample Manu Dibango's horn. You dig from Soul Makosa. They sampled it. Slick Rick in 1988. Sample Manu Dibango's horns again in a track called Let's Get Crazy. Sample it. See, reinventing, you take, you bring your own stuff, you reinvent, you give something good. Add the Murphy and this um, boogie in your butt. Sample the horn. Go watch it in 1982. Go watch it. See, because before I speak, bro, let me tell you something. I listen per day. I listen to like 30 musics. I try to listen to different diverse genre of music. And I can tell you off like this, which music looks like something from somewhere that I've listened to it. You dig? That's just, a that's something I do for, for, for my leisure time. You smell me? So before you want to come argue with me, bro, make sure that you got your facts correct because I don't talk BS on here. Ghetto Boys, man, in 1991, in Trophy, they sampled Manu Dibango's horns. See, I cannot be playing all these things because of copyright claims. It did, but I'm, I'm going to leave it in the description box so you guys can go check it out. They sampled that man's horn. They took this man's stuff and they brought their own thing and he gave them trophy. Why are the Cameroon artists not trying to do these things? Jay-Z, Future and Sauce, more Money, Face Off. 1997. Yep, I, I, come on, man. I used to vibe to that song. They sampled Manu Dibango's horns. 
So we talked about the drums that they sampled and then the horns that they sampled from Mamnu Dubango's work, So Makosa. Now let's talk about the vocals, the famous vocal from Manu Dubango, which I think he is known for. Mama say, Mama say, Mama Kosa. Mama say, Mama say, Mama Kosa. First of all, off the bat, Michael Jackson. If you wanna be starting something, you got to be starting something. Mama say, Mama say, Mama Kosa. You remember that? Yes. Rihanna, she sampled it and she was sued. And it was said out of Akon sampled this stuff too. Patra, the Jamaican dang so sister, Buyaka in a track with uh where 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 Tupac appeared on it, banana. I think that's in 1995. I remember because I was so into Shaka Demos and Plies back in the day. They, they, she sampled this. The, the, the vocals a tribe called quest some of your some of your artists in Cameroon will not even know this group because i don't know what kind of stuff you get up and you start doing your music basing your music on but it's very easy for me and claire to see which artist does research before they get into a project i can tell you that you dig the trap called quest in the track in 1990 i think the title was so uh, right now, rhythm. Yeah, I remember that. I didn't write that down. I remember that rhythm 1990. Yes, I heard that track rhythm. I heard rhythm in 1998. I was still a kid. I heard rhythm. You feel me? And I knew immediately that there was the mama say, mama say, mama. Oh, no, this is my new debango. You dig? And Will Smith. And get it jiggy with it. Na 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 na. Get it jiggy with it. Na 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 na. Sample the vocals of Manu Dibango. You hear? Kanye West and Bon Eva lost in the world. 2010. They sampled the vocals. Red Man and Let's Go. 20, 2006. He sampled Mama Say, Mama Sa, Mama Kosa. Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, the NBA player. Did you guys know he dropped? Albums that went platinum. You guys didn't even know that Shaquille knew was a rapper. Featuring Al Al Scratch. A day in Mike Check 1-2. 1994. I remember that. Because that's when I started getting into hip hop. He sampled that. But see some of you guys don't know. Miss Eller to go to the floor. Sample that shit in 20 in 2002. You did Eminem D12 OB Trice. Do re me. But we don't see him up. So murder ain't do your thing, mom. That was a diss to Jaro. Mama say, Mama say, Mama Kosa. Jagon play, you know you not to pack. Do re me. Black Root in 1988, a day in life, to sample the vocals. Millie Vanilli, girl, you know it's true. The remix. Ooh, 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 had I knew. You guys, come on, man, 1990, man. Charles Hamilton, Brooklyn Girls, 2008. I remember that. I was in Salisbury. I was vibing to this shit on one of my trip to Ocean City. Sampling. So this is what I'm going to tell you. All these Cameroon people who think that I'm crazy when I when I tell these folks that they are not authentic. No. When I say sample, I don't say go and take an artist song and you, you just take out. No. Sampling is you take the drum, you take a part of the instrument, even a part of the vocals, and you make something out of it. You can make a hook. But see, you guys going to keep going in a circle like this. Cameroon artists, you're going to be doing Afro beat. Copying, copying from Nigeria, copying come from Nigeria, and you talk shit about them. Look at Whiskey. If if when I listen to Whiskey, I see a bit of Felakuti in Whiskey's track. I do. If you don't, then you're so dumb. So all of these folks who come telling me that uh, I don't like Cameroonian artists, it's because they are not creative. All you guys do is noise. Music is not hard. That's the reason y'all ain't getting paid. That's the reason y'all ain't getting booked every month. An artist who sit in Cameroon, you're not even getting international bookings like two per month. And you're running your mouth saying you're better than this artist, that artist. That is not rational, bro. You dig? So, man, 
Check this, bro, this man's work. Go back to the old Makosas. Listen, go to Petit Pays. Take a, a, a song of him from, um, um, there's a song, Mon grand père était à My mama était à do the Some push like this, vocals like this. Talk to the man. Can I borrow a chant from your song? Pay some money. Of course. Sample that. Go to old Makosa, Hongla Ekwala, fam, il faut supporter, mm. supporter, il faut supporter, c'est le mar, sample shit like this, man, go to the DA Yango, you must to calculate, go sample, go to Ben Decker, go to Grace Decker, there are a lot of them, man, but you know, we are, they are so stupid and so deaf, creativity is not sold in the market, you gotta be creative. Nigerian artists, when you listen to that, you, you see Velasquez's work. But see, is he copying? No. They take a part of it and then mix it and come up with something new with sales. Man, that's my time, man. This is a message to all of the Cameroon up and coming artists. Pay close attention. Thesis plus antithesis gives new, th new thesis. Thesis can be throw back old Makosa song, all of that. Antithesis, your vibe, you blend them, you bring something. Oh, look at what X Malaya did with the Boalotin stuff. Man, that's my time. You know what to do, man. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all always. You dig? Ain't no hate, it's all love. But yo, man, you gotta kill with the dumb down copy work. Wake up. You dig? Anybody who's trying to do that, shout out to you, man. You know what I mean? I'm good. Be good, man. Have a great Sunday, man. That's what we're going to talk about for this Sunday. You dig? I know it's already morning in some of y'all, man. Pray for Mr. J. You smell me? I'm coming down with a cold, but it's all good. It's, it's my fang. You dig? Be good, man. I'm out of here. Peace out.